a common water ripple projector type device that I bought in this instance from CPC in the UK, but it's very common. It seems to be a standard thing around the world. It comes with a 5 volt uh, power supply. I was going to say 5 volt USB power supply. Yes, technically it's speaking, it could be. But this is a generic sort of Christmas lighting type uh, power supply. Um, and it puts out the 5 volts at up to 1.2 amps, 6 watts. And if I plug it in, we instantly discover that I've already lost the remote control. It literally, I put this on the gadget mountain and the remote control immediately slid and crowd surfed all the way to the bottom. Goodness knows where it is. It looks like one of these, if I remember correctly. But uh, this one doesn't work. Let's try it anyway. No, nothing happening. Right. But anyway, so I'll show you the effect this gives and then we can take it to bits. So I shall switch to that now. This is the effect it projects. It's not bad. It's a passable ripple effect, although you can see the placement of the LEDs affects this sort of appearance. I may experiment with that. But it's not a bad effect. I can tell already that behind this multiple sort of bug's eye lens, there is a glass ripple, well, plastic ripple disc that is rotating slowly in front of it. It's a good effect. OK, time for the teardown. And begin the teardown. I shall unplug it. And we'll start taking the screws out. There's quite a lot of them. They've sealed this well. Well, I say they've sealed it well. I've not tried it outside, so I don't know if it fills up with water instantly in the first night. I would hope it doesn't. A lot of this stuff from CPC is actually okay. It's uh, CPC is part of uh, the Element 14 group. Farnell, is it uh, DigiKey? Yeah, not sure. Not sure how many uh, companies are part of it. But they're big. They went from being kind of like industrial supplies to just everything. Quite an interesting company. They occasionally get the shady product in from time to time, but it's not bad. There is our little ripple disc. Right, I can see more screws. I'm going to have to take a little ripple disc out. I shall take a little ripple disc out. I take it, it is plastic. I shall give it the tooth test. It's plastic. Nice enough in its own right. Oh, it's got a single uh, LED in here. That means the chips are all going to be sort of off angle. Right, tell you what, let's undo these screws. You can't see a thing in here because it's dark. Neither can I. Everything's black. Oh, I've just unscrewed the motor. I don't think that's what I was supposed to do. Let's try these two screws instead. One of these will be the power cable. The power cable is... And one will be the motor. Oh, the whole lot's stuck into the bracket. Uh, I shall take that bracket out. Oh, this is turning out messy. I've also pinged screws everywhere, so it's debatable whether this... We'll be going back together afterwards, though I quite like it. It does strike me that it needs a little bit of hackery. Oh, you know what? There's an antenna. It's, it's radio remote control. That'll be why it wasn't responding very well to infrared. Okay, what do we have now? There is the power coming on through this connector. There's the motor through that connector. Here's what we have. So I shall zoom down in this. Actually, you know what? I may just uh, cut to the chase and take some pictures of this so we can see what it looks like. Right, tell you what, I shall do that. One moment, please. Let's explore. I have inverted the image of the circuit board. It just makes it easier to see because it is very, very black. So we have the incoming supply coming onto this uh, connector here, and it goes straight to this electrolytic capacitor. It then goes through this Schottky diode over to this capacitor, and I thought they would maybe be filtering it out a little bit with that diode to provide a local supply for things like the RF circuitry and the microcontroller, but in reality, everything is powered from this capacitor here at that slightly reduced voltage. They may have done it just to drop the voltage to take the strain off these resistors. There's also a little tiny decoupling capacitor over that one. There's the motor connector. The motor has a diode across it and also a capacitor across it for filtering and uh, clamping of the back EMF spike. It also has its own, its own little MOSFET. There is a 3.3 volt voltage regulator here and that feeds the RF circuitry with its crystal and that also feeds the microcontroller. The LED is switched by four MOSFETs. There's actually red, green, blue and white and for matching one ohm resistors. And that 
is about it. Things worthy of note for the RF guys. They'll like this. I have uh, reverse engineered this, uh, this circuit diagram down, noted all the pin numbers so you can try and deduce what chip this is. But this little coiled antenna that sits above the circuit board is just in parallel with another antenna which zigzags backwards and forwards along the circuit board. I wonder if they found that the effectiveness of that antenna was somewhat compromised by the big slab of aluminium that composes most of the PCB. So basically speaking, there's a complex thing with high frequency, well, that it's going to attenuate it. Fortunately, it's not putting a signal out. It's just purely receiving it. But this uh, antenna on the circuit board is basically just capacitively coupled to the zero volt rail effectively via uh, capacitive coupling again to back from the aluminium back to the general mass of the circuit board. Very strange. But anyway, I shall go straight to the circuit board. Oh, there's also uh, pins here. Plus and minus FDC. Plus and minus for powering the microcontroller. Data clock and frickin' reset, I'd guess, for the serial programming. Here is the schematic. I shall zoom down a tiny little bit onto this. So here's the incoming supply, 5 volts-ish. There's the smoothing capacitor. Uh, 470 microfarad. 470 microfarad uh, at... 16 volt. So is this one. This is also 470 megafarad at 16 volt. Uh, that then feeds the LEDs and the motor and all the other stuff, but it also feeds the 3.3 volt regulator, which goes to the RF circuitry. I've noted all the pin numbers down here. It's notable for one positive connection to pin 3, two negative connections to pins 1 and 6, 8 pin chip. Uh, 4 and 7 each of a capacitor to the 0 volt rail, 8 has the crystal to the 0 volt rail. Uh, pin 2 is going through a parallel LC network to the antenna, and there's also another LC network to the 0 volt rail. Um, uh, this link from, I didn't know which pin that was. That would have been quite useful if I had noted which pin that was. Uh, the data is coming out of pin 5. Hold on. I shall add that to the drawing just for completeness. Uh, where's the matching pen for that? Pin 5. The microcontroller receives the data from pin 5, decodes it, and then controls the dimming and stuff of the LEDs. It's got four AO9T MOSFETs, each with a 1 ohm resistor and the LED, red, green, blue, and white. But it also has another MOSFET called an ARHV, which is switching the motor and using pulses modulation to control its speed. And it has the back EMF diode and also the little capacitor for filtering across it. And that is it. Not a super duper complicated circuit, fairly logical, nothing really radical. This little decoupling capacitor is in the vicinity of the microcontroller. Um, yeah, that's it. So it's an interesting effect. It is very typical of these type of things. Uh, the nicest things about this are the motor with this little pattern disc. Uh, lots of grease everywhere. Or grease, if you live in a country which says grease. And then this uh, insect eye type lens. Very interesting. Oh, I'm going to shine a light through this. Oh yeah, lots of lots of light patterns. I do think it'd be quite interesting putting an LED on either side of this so that one pattern's going up and the other's going down. But I wonder if separating them too much is going to splash, splash them too far apart in this. Although if they were both the same colour, it would compensate for that. But it's interesting. It's a very interesting and logically designed light. So that is it. The uh, water ripple projector light that runs off that little classic Christmas light style power supply, but putting out 5 volts. Quite neat. Not bad at all.